Hello and welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today with the Quilts of Valor Tulip Block. Now there's going to be in the show notes below the Quilts of Valor both for the US and Canada so you can go to their website and pick up some beautiful free patterns and we thought today because when we're filming this, this is National Quilts of Valor Sewing Day which is in February but I mean this is going to be airing in March but I thought this would be a good chance for you guys to go and check out you know check out what they're doing see if you want to join their community and get involved with sewing up Quilts of Valor. The other thing is I want you to check up is Paula at Paula and Tess, Paulette and Tess at the Tulip Square right so they're a new they're a YouTube channel and their link is going to be in the show notes below so if you go and check them out and you like what you see there and you subscribe tell them that Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore sent you it'll be a fun little thing for us to get involved doing okay so that's it so we also have a Facebook group and we're using the room features it's a lot of fun so come join us that Facebook group is going to be linked below in the show notes as well so come on in we've got some beautiful cute little sewing to do okay so this is our layout so if you guys want to just take a you know quick long view of how this gets laid out I mean these don't appear you know they're like a four and a half inch strip that's here. This is this Quilts of Valor block from Tulips from the Canadian site and I just think it's beautiful. And there is little tricks that you can do to make this a little easier. So now uh, what we're going to do is the first thing we do is we do our subunits. Our subunits are really important and the smallest subunit is these corners right here. So I'm just going to quickly do the little subunits first. Because you'll see, it doesn't look like it's going to quite fit together, does it? It's kind of like, what is she doing there? That's not going to work. Well, it does. Really, it does. Trust me on this. So I'm just going to take out... Oh, i got a leader ender here. That's been a lot of fun to work with, but it's in my way now. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah, these little subunits all are just you, sometimes you have to kind of oops work with them a little bit now once you get three you're gonna press to the dark so that means you flip them over and you fold them up like this just because you don't want to show through on this block right you don't want uh, all this stuff to show through so now we put our little bars on the rectangles on <laughs> there we go. well some people when they do this block they prefer to do the the triangles first it does not matter when I give you the cutting instructions I you know it's cut once through for this block so these you just when you cut your square you cut them only once this is where the bias edges are here and this straight of grain is ends up here and you do that both with the white and or your background color and your, your red or whatever color you've chosen to make your tulip this one's nice fun little block this one just makes a just makes it work there we go. And last one through. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm gonna put these back. And I'm just gonna and all I'm doing is finger pressing, right? I'm not running back and forth to the ironing board because I think some of you would <laughs> okay, enough already with the so you end up you start shrinking these down into a smaller piece, right? Okay, so let's get oh let's get and I just press away on the I just press this way because you've got some resistance there so let's not do any resistance next up I do the triangles and the triangles because I cut them in half just to make my task of piecing simpler I'm just going to piece eight half square triangles now you if you choose to do them where you're doing you know like you know, half 
you know, where you do that two at a time thing, and that's what you want to do, all the more power to you. Just that's that works, you know. That if that puts you in your happy place to do it that way, do it that way, you know. But I sometimes, especially when I'm tired, I prefer to do things this way because then I'm not stressing about what does it look like, what's this, what's that, you know. So I just take on all my triangles. Ugh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, my husband and I were chatting and um, any speaking engagements or whatever that guilds need, I am doing for free just to help the guilds out, the quilting guilds out. Um, so if you know of a guild that's having a hard time or whatever, get to go talk to their president or their, um, ch what is it, the community chairperson or the programming, whatever person that is at your local social, and tell them about me. You know, like I say, I don't sell anything. I'm not, you know, I'm not backing or endorsing products or, that's not what I'm doing. I decided when we started this channel that it was all going to be free patterns and lots of fun and that was it that was that was where we were going you know so I guess some people don't understand that but that's okay now we clip off our triangles yeah I, I, we get offers every week to sell stuff and you know be our affiliate link for this or that and that's not where we want to be. That's not what we want to be doing. So I'm just going to run another Kate's Folly block through as a leader ender just to just to make sure I get all my triangles off at once. This is a fun little project here too. I'm um, We're doing this quilt and then we're donating it to charity. So I did just did strip sets from Wicked the Fabrics and I did uh, I went through all my black and white prints and we decided we were going to have fun with this and make it bright and wild and it is going to be fun. So anyway, so now you've got all your triangles. I flip them over and I cut deeper, right? Because I don't want a bunch of bulk right at that corner, right? Because you want your corners sharp and the only way you're going to get sharp corners is if you... Some people just cut it off like this. I go a little deeper. That's what I'm trying to say. Just to reduce the bulk. And I go like one eighth. So by the time the next sewing line covers, I've got more than an eighth of uh, an inch of uh, seam allowance. So, And it doesn't take long to do this. It really doesn't. But yeah, so my speaking engagements are... You know, have a little trunk show, and I talk about what's coming up on the channel, and, you know, I tell them there's all these free patterns and where to find them, and it's been a lot of fun so far, so I'm kind of looking forward to the next set or two. Okay, so now, these are supposed to measure, oops, we press to the dark, and we put, start putting them back in order. Now these measure come out at two and a half inches. So that's how they go back. Can you see all that? So when you see them, it now is starting to, oh wow, that's actually gonna fit together. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> and some people what they do is they, they keep sewing and then they square up. I mean, these are two and a half inches. I mean, they pretty much came out the way, you know, because of my sewing foot, or my quarter inch foot, they pretty much, and I decided I was going to use some very bright red, just because I had, um, the white, the background is, I don't know from where, and I don't know where this fabric is from, but this is that Ruby Sky, Ruby so Sky Society, so anyway, so now we start putting together our little four patches up here, we do those next, now, because these are all lining up, right? We want to make sure that this all works. And we'll make sure the bottom lines up good. 
Look at that. Perfect. And I'll we'll take that off. And the next bit is here. There we go. Oh, look at that. It matches perfectly. Okay. So, the next one. I'm just going to keep running these through. Okay. There we go. Line up the... Oh. Wow, I can't line up any today. Okay. There we go. And this... Line that up. Okay, now this is just a hair bigger, but that's okay. I'm going to rely on the feed dog to shrink that up you know sometimes these little these little patches here this is not a little patch but sometimes these little ones they they get a little out of whack and you always try to put the bigger one on the bottom if you can because it's easier for the feed dogs but to work their magic but sometimes it's just not possible and it's because your quarter inch might be off, your quarter inch foot might be off, or you know something like something like that has happened. Okay, so now, okay, I'm gonna get this. Just perfect. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now you go back to the very end, and you're going to start sewing them into four patches. Okay, so I'm gonna open them up. Just like this, open them up and finger press and that way. Oh, that one goes. No, which way does this one? This one goes that way. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, this one goes out. This goes up, this goes down. That's right, there we go. Now, this has got a string in between that I clip because I want to get in there and really take a, take my time and match up that nest. There we go. One stitch over the line of sewing here. There we go. There. Okay. Now we. Okay. This goes this way, okay, this goes this way, and that goes this way, there we go. Now you iron, you iron in all the same way, you, you finger press them all the same way, so there shouldn't be a problem then. Now, I clip because I want to see where that, exactly where that is, so, and that's where I want to, I know it's, I'm webbing it to keep it together in the right place, but I take it apart. So I can make sure I make a good nest. But sometimes that uh, that little connector string gets in the way, right? there, Because you're connected on these, right? So if you don't clip it, sometimes it doesn't work out the way you want it to. So here we go. Okay. That goes down. This goes up. There we go. There. <laughs> Mm -hmm. These are fun, fun little blocks. These are just so cute. There's a big thing here in Canada um, where the Holland or Amsterdam or whatever they call themselves now um, gave us tulips, gave Canadian tulips. So I guess it's it's a it's almost like a one country was rescued at the war and they gave us they gave us tulips. So I think I have tulips in my front yard too. And I just love to see come up. They're the first they're the first in my climate where I'm at in Edmonton, Alberta. They're the very first 
flowers other than the crocuses that come up. So here we go. Now we just start clipping these apart. Okay. Now we break open the center just like that. So the center of the tulip lies nice and flat. And you give it a quick finger press, press on your board. Okay. And then we put that there. Put that one there. There we go. There. Now you can see where it's starting to come together, right? Okay. Now I have not ironed this. I have not touched it with an iron. We're doing this real, real life, real life thing. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to start webbing all of this together. There we go. And just get that opened. Oh, come on. And every once in a while, you end up on it stubborn and it will not pop their stitches, but that's okay. You just, you keep working at it and eventually it does pop. And if push comes to shove and you had to open it up, get your seam ripper and just pluck out the last, you know, three, you know, the last two stitches down to the next seam line. And it should fold open. It'll pop open then. Okay, so there's the last one. Now we're going to put, start, continue webbing the block. And I find webbing the block helps me keep everything in order. And I don't tend to get lost as <laughs> to what I'm supposed to be doing. Here, and match up all that. There we go. Now run the other leader run ender through. Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to line this up. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't sell it. My husband and I agreed we wouldn't sell things and, you know, market stuff here. I just, I'm not charging for patterns or anything. Because it's one of those things that, you know, people after the pandemic are having a hard time affording stuff. And I just would prefer that they come into their sewing room and have a good time. You know. Okay, here we go. Now, what you do is you put this back on your board. Just like so. And you're going to go out like that. And press... Press this one this way, and this one goes this way, and this one goes this way. There. So now you can see how it's all going to go together. Be we we webbed together. There we go. Oh, we put this down. Get all this stuff out of the way. There we go. And that goes up. This goes across like that. Oops, there we go, just like that. There. And <laughs> okay, now I gotta find another leader ender. Okay. Yeah, we've got some pretty wild black and white prints here. <laughs> but they're so much fun. They're going to look great in a quilt together. They're just going to be like, wow. And like I say, I'm using strip sets, so I'm keeping the color to a minimum. Like, there will be little pops of color, but it's not going to be overwhelming in this quilt. Okay, now... So now we got all this going the right way. Let's pull this back. So this goes like this. This goes to the dark. And this goes in. Hmm, there we go. Just like that, right? 
So you can see how this is all coming together now, right? Okay, let's get this done. Okay, let's get this one done. Okay, here we go. No. Okay, where are the webbings? The webbings are here and here. Okay. Uh, I don't, whatever you do, don't cut the other webbing. Well, you could. I mean, it's not like this is a real complex block or anything, but. So you want to make sure these nests, this nests with this, right here. Right? <laughs> And then these two nest. And you just want to sew like one needle and keep your needle down so that you get, so you can manage to maneuver it a bit. Or, and we go. Okay, now let's get the other half of that wild thing done. <laughs> these are fun blocks actually, because you can get quite a few blocks done in an afternoon. And I have oodles and oodles of black and white prints, just like this. Okay, here we go. And for some reason, I think it's because I used strip sets with that were pink edge, pink edges. Um, my I'm a little off on my quarter inch seam. So I have a funny feeling that's what it's from. Okay, so there we are. We're getting the last seam now. <laughs> and we're gonna just going to, okay, we're just going to push that like this. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Wait, why is that? Yeah, that's working. Okay. <laughs> okay, clip my webbing again just to make sure everything lines up perfectly the way it needs to. Okay, the next one gets right in here. There we go, get a good nest, and then like that, and then all the way down. Okay, now let me just get another leader ender going, and we'll have our, our next ta-da moment. So here we are with our cute little tulip block from the Quilts of Valor page. I just love these nice lovely bright colors that you can play around with it I'm gonna be hitting my reds pretty hard over the next couple of weeks so hopefully we we can move out some red scraps and have fun um, if you get the chance to make one of these blocks that's perfect take the time to square up your half square triangles I didn't and I do have a wee bit of puck ring. we're talking like you're squaring up and and or squaring down and you're just squaring off little hairs of thread. We're not talking a lot of thread. So this one worked out really well. And I think it's a beautiful bright color. Now, it doesn't have to be just for Quilts of Valor. This one would make a lovely springtime quilt, you know, in all sorts of different scrappy colors, you know, whatever blue and purple and pink and whatever color else you want to put in your tulips. So I hope you have fun with this block. And I hope you have an absolutely fabulous week ahead. And until we meet again, okay, you take care. Okay, bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for coming along with us on our quilting journey and the YouTube adventure that we're on. We have some wonderful plans for 2023. And it includes a lot more like with the Facebook group and the rooms feature and sewing and hanging out with people. Those monthly Zoom sew dates are still in the works. We have a lot of fun ideas coming up for 2023 and we hope you share, like, and subscribe with your friends. That little notification but button and subscribing to us really helps us out. Commenting 
helps us out too. So if you like what you're seeing, let us know. Even send us a like a, a heart on the comment. That that helps so much for us. Okay, you have an absolutely fabulous 2023 and all of our best wishes for you in the future. Okay, take care. Bye.